Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to take a look at the DEL operator. For us to be able to understand the differential form of Gauss's law, which is right here, let me put a nice little box around it because this is what we're trying to understand right here. Here we go. We already saw in the previous video that's mathematically equivalent to the in integral form of Gauss's law, but now we, un we want to physically understand what this really is. So we're going to understand what the DEL operator is, we're going to try and understand what this uh, operation which is called the divergence means and we're going to try and understand what we mean by the charge density in various physical situations. But first the, the DEL operator, what is that? Well it depends what coordinate system you're in. You can be talking about the Cartesian coordinate system, the cylindrical coordinate system or the spherical coordinate system. In each case there is a DEL operator but it looks very different. Now in the Cartesian coordinate system it's fairly straightforward. Here's the DEL operator. It looks like a vector quantity. It has the x, y, z unit vectors and multiplied with that is an operation. The operation is a differential operation. It is taking the partial derivative which is of the whatever it is that you're taking the DEL operator of or the diversions of right here. It's the partial de derivative with respect to the first variable x or the first direction x plus the y unit vector times the partial derivative in the y direction plus the z unit vector times the partial deri derivative with respect to z. Now when you do this, this operation, when you now write the del operator multiplied times the vector and let's assume now we're dealing with the, with the vector of an electric field. Since this acts like a vector quantity because it has x, y, z unit vectors and this of course is a vector quantity which could have an x, y, z um, uh, portion like we wrote over here. Let's say that E, the vector E which is the electric field is equal to the magnitude in the x direction times the unit vector in the x direction, the magnitude in the y direction times the unit vector in the y direction times the magnitude of the z in the z direction times the unit vector in the z direction. Now remember from doing dot products, if we multiply two vectors together using the dot product, all we do is multiply the x component of the one vector times the x component of the other vector, add that to the multiplication of the y components plus the multiplication of the z components. So when we do this operation right here, the divergence, uh, which is the del operating on a vector, the del operating, the del operator operating on a vector, then it will look like this. This is equal to now notice the unit vector quantities will disappear just like they do in a dot product. So the end result is not a vector, the end result will be a scalar. And so what happens then is we take the partial derivative with respect to x and multiply that times the x component of the, um, of the uh, vector, the x component of the electric field vector. Now we're not really multiplying here, we're actually taking the partial derivative of the x component of the vector. So it's kind of like a multiplication as far as the way we write it down so because the unit vectors disappear but we're not, really not multiplying here, we're really taking the partial derivative of that component plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component of the vector plus the partial derivative with respect to z times the z component of the vector and I'm messing the writing up here, this is e sub z what I'm trying to write. Okay, and so that's what we mean by taking the divergence of the vector E, the divergence of the electric field, and that gives us a scalar quantity. So now at least we know what we mathematically mean by taking the divergence of a vector. We don't yet know what that physically really means, and we'll get into that in our next video. Now, keeping in mind that we might be able to do things, or we may have to do things in either the what we call cylindrical coordinates or the spherical coordinates. For example, let's say that our charge distribution instead of being a sphere is a cylinder. So let's say we have a cylindrical region that has charge embedded within it and we want to find the electric field emanating from that cylindrical object filled with, filled with charge. So we have to be able to do the del operator on cylindrical coordinates. Now typically what we find is that the electric field has a uniform um, uniform magnitude in all directions. So even though we have a cylindrical object, the electric field will have the same strength in all directions, just a different direction but the same strength. If that's the case, we only have to worry about this first portion of the equation. This we don't have to worry about because there will not be a change in those two directions. There will no, not be a change in the z direction and there will not be a change as a function of angle and so we can just, just 
take this first portion of the equation, and later on I'll show you some examples of how we actually do that on a cylindrical charge density. And if we have a spherical charge density, we should try to use spherical, spherical coordinates, which means, again, that if the field is uniformly distributed in a spherical shape, we can go ahead and, and not worry about these portions of the del operator uh, acting on the vector or the diversions of that. We only have to concentrate on the radial portion because the electric field will be the same strength no matter which direction it's pointing away from the spherical region with charge. And so we only have to worry about this portion. So what we then do is to find, for example, the divergence of the electric field what we do is we take the electric field strength in any direction, radially outward, at some point at the surface of the Gaussian surface, multiply times r squared, which is then the, the variable from the center, from the origin or from the center of the object to the edge of the object, and then we take the partial derivative of that, and then we multiply it by 1 over r, oop, this is wrong here, this should be 1 over r squared, like that. And that will then be what we call the divergence of the electric field in spherical coordinates. Again, we don't have to worry about this part unless the charge density is such that the electric field changes depending upon what direction we're pointing to. That's usually not the case in the more easy solvable problems. So, now that you realize what the del operator is, it's simply something that looks like this, simply something that looks like this, or like this, multiplied, if we then do the divergence, we then multiply it times the, the uh, electric or the electric field vector in the various coordinates of the spherical coordinate system or the various coordinates of the spherical coordinate system. Or if we work in the Cartesian coordinate system, we take the operation or we do the divergence with respect to the x, y, z coordinates of the Cartesian coordinate system. So now, at least mathematically, you should understand what the del operator is. You should understand when we've then multiplied using the dot product notation with the electric field vector, we then will get a scalar quantity that is a result of taking the divergence of the electric field, typically at the surface of a charged object. And from that, we should be able to then prove that these equations are the same, and we should be able to use that notation to figure out and understand what, Maxwell's was, what Maxwell was looking at as far as knowing what these equations meant and how they related to real situations where there's a charge distribution and where we're trying to find the strength of the electric field relative to that charge distribution. That's what it's all about. So, if you're still with me, look at the next several, uh, several videos and I'll begin to show you some examples how we actually utilize this where it actually makes sense in the real world with charge distributions and electric field strengths.